Hello, hi everyone. It's time to review the July market data again. So my name is Lex with the Cal Agents Real Estate. So what you see on the screen is the data from the California Association of Realtors for the month of July, all the close, close sales in the month of July. Um, we are looking at the Bay Area, different counties. So one thing that we, um, we want to pay attention to is that this month, we noticed that some of these counties are actually have a year over year over over year gain. So in the month of June, all of these were still a, a dip. It was still all the sole price was still lower than the, those of uh, in 2022. But this month, we start to see that Santa Clara County 3.4 percent higher sale price compared to July 2022. Okay, 1.8 versus 1.74. San Mateo County 1.98 versus 1.96. So these county have already recovered from the dip uh, since 2022. Okay, yeah, Contra Color County, the same thing slightly higher. Some of these counties are still behind. Uh, Alameda County 1.26 versus 1.32. Uh, San Francisco is still heavily affected um, because of the exodus of, of, the, of the tech jobs and all of the negative news coverage about crimes, drugs, and, and all these things surrounding the city of San Francisco is still suffering. So, and in terms of month, 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 month over month, uh, Napa is always the very volatile market. Uh, it, 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 there's really no pattern. I guess people who love wine just like to do their own thing. Um, and all the, all the other counties are pretty consistent. So we always experience a little bit of dip during summertime because people just like to travel, people take their kids out, um, if you are just not looking at uh, checking out homes as um, often as in spring and, and in, in the fall. So what's the biggest news? Well, in the real estate market, the biggest news is really the, the really high, uh, the, again, the, the, the ticked up mortgage rate. So over here, oh, let me get myself out. Okay, so we're looking at five year arm, seven year arm turn um, are currently checking in slightly higher than the 30 year. Okay, they're all in the early 7%. The little red line here that more like a brown line is seven year arm. And five year arm is the purple one 30 year fix is the green one. Okay, so we have had this trend for, for a while since the, the Fed started hiking rates. Usually short-term rates like this tend to be quite a bit lower than, than the fixed rate. So back in, back in the days, so look at these. Um, the arms are lower than the 30-year fix, but they pretty much just crisscross each other somewhere um, somewhere around, around here, around this time. So there, there's uh, early 2023 when the, the Fed has started aggressively hiking rates. Now the, all, all, all of these arm rates cross over the 30 year fix. And so you're not gonna get any better deal by go to, going with a five year arm. Okay, so what what does this mean, right? Um, so we I think we are heading into a market where um, there will be a reduction in the, in the sales volume. Uh, and and you can you can see from here, um, sales volume wise, it's uh, like be between five to twenty percent lower than than last year, ac ac across the board. Santa Clara six six point two negative six point two, San Mateo negative eighteen point six, Napa is the the wacky one five point six five point seven higher than previous year, but for the most part, sales volume dropped quite a bit, and this will will, will continue as the mortgage rate goes up. People are just cannot afford this kind of uh, mortgage rate, and and also sellers who who are potentially selling now they don't want to sell because if they sell they they might need to buy another home and they will need to start with a high mortgage. So this um, interaction between mortgage rate and and, and home uh, value and transaction is gonna be around for at least for another year. Okay, so now. Um, for this episode, I would like to sh uh, show you how to use your Google spreadsheet to actually analyze rental properties. So since we have 
this ticked up in the mortgage rate. I want to use this as an example to show you how things are looking when the mortgage rate change. So I have a blank Google spreadsheet here and I am just really uh, improvising here. So uh, let's pick a rental property uh, in Alameda County and then we will, we will take a look at it. Suppose you want to buy a, um, let's say this, sing this single family home in San Ramon. Okay, let's, uh, just, I'll close my eyes and randomly click something here. Oh, oh, I didn't click anything. Okay, so here, let's see what happened. What do you got? Oh man, it's, it's a piece of land. Okay, so I should just get rid of this focus on homes and condo, condos and the condo and, and townhouse. Okay, so click. No, oh, click. Okay, what do we got? Okay, 848, that's a San Lorenzo home, 556. So A48, so let's, let's put down price. Two hundred forty-eight thousand, um, and suppose you have a down payment. Okay, down payment of twenty percent, which works out to be uh, one or close to one hundred seventy. Loan amount will be the price minus the down payment. Okay, so to to calculate your mortgage payment. Um, you, I will introduce a formula, it's a function called PMT. That's the, the periodic payment function for an annuity investment. So you use it to, to calculate your mortgage payment. So it, it takes a couple of things. It first asks you what's the interest rate or you, um, in, the, in the financial world it's called discount rate. Um, and let's put, let's say, let's say our interest is right now, let's say 5.1. Okay, oops. Oh, let's do five or seven point one. That's our interest rate. So notice this is a. Um, I need to divide it by twelve because that's a number. Um, it's a, it's monthly. It's a, the interest rate. Is cal the interest is calculated monthly. So it's, it's it's a thirty year loan. So thirty times twelve. That's the number of months. Uh, present value. We we'll put a negative sign in front of it and then select the, the the loan amount. So now we're looking at a mortgage payment. So this is a payment of 4,559. Okay, so now you now you have the mortgage payment. Uh, how about insurance? And what is this? Is it a single family home? I didn't even open up to look at the pictures. So let's see what we, what we got here. This looks like a single family home. Um, Let's see, what do we have? Yep, it's a single family home. Um, is there any HOA due? Um, there's no HOA, I suppose. Oh, well, some, sing, some single family homes in, in San Lorenzo actually has HOA, so that's why it doesn't hurt to double check. So the insurance for a single family home, it's typically somewhere between $1,000 to $2,000, uh, say 1500 um, and divided by 12, that's the, how much you need to pay every month. And property tax. So property tax is a tricky business. You can't really just you, you multiply the home value with a percentage. And so I will sh also show you how to you can precisely calculate the, the property tax of a property that you will be purchasing. Okay, so let's see. Uh, next, actually, I don't want to go to tax collector, tax assessor. Okay, let's check it out. So over here, uh, assessor's record. Oh, wait, no, not here. Secure property tax bill. Let's try that. Okay, that's the website I'm looking for. To click on secured, and the address is five five six. Alameda. Oh wait, not necessarily San Lorenzo. 
Okay, this is the property tax bill. So, um, the way to look at a property tax bill is property tax is uh, calculated from two components. The first one, oh, here we go. The property tax bill. Um, the way to calculate the property tax you need to pay, it, it comes from two parts. The first one depends on the value of the home that you that the ta assessor is taxing you on. So the, you can find a tax rate over here, 1.2104. Now we can switch back to our Google spreadsheet. So the first one, 1.2014% times the price you purchase it at. Okay, now next one, 2104. The next one is a fixed amount. So this is all of these ballots that um, that voters pass, and this is fixed amount that adds on top. 9A4.4. So, plus 9A4.4. That is how much property tax you will be paying per year. And if we divide it by 12, that's the monthly property tax for a home in San Lorenzo at this address for a, when if you purchase it for eight hundred forty eight thousand dollar. Okay, now now let's just quickly check our cash flow. Uh, well, one imp really important component of the cash flow is how much rent you are gonna get. So um, I I have a tool. Uh, if you're a Cal Agent customer, uh, you have access to it. If you're with one of our clients, uh, you have access to to this. We would and actually pull data. Uh, actual rent, rental comparable data, all of the homes that was rented out uh, for the last 12 months um, to how big is this home? This is a three bed, one bath. Okay, it's three bed, one bath. I'm pulling data out for all of the house. Within the last twelve months. Okay, so this is what you what you got. So this let's look at the, the data over here. Um, so average rent three thousand. Uh, if I review the pro report, that will give me actual comparables. So uh, I'm not gonna spend time to look through each one, but let's just trust the number over here. Um, over there, so the medium rent is about three thousand sixty-three dollars. Let's just use that, three thousand sixty-three dollars a month. And these are all of my expenses. Let's add it up. And now we have a negative cash flow of two thousand five hundred fifty-eight dollars. Okay, so suppose, suppose, um, let's look at back in the days, we have a lower interest rate. So let's say back in, um, yeah, back in, the, let's say one year ago, okay, one year ago, we were looking at a single family home around 5.56. So suppose we have 5.56 as our interest rate, your Oh, okay, hold on. Operating expense. Okay, this is actually not a not a right word, is it? It's actually called cash outflow, okay? Because our mortgage uh, payment includes principal and interest, not the entire amount is considered an expense. Oh, okay, so this this that's why it's messed up. Okay. Let me change the formula slightly. Now you can see it is a um, almost seven thousand seven hundred dollar difference per month with a lower interest rate. Um, it's negative one thousand eight hundred seventy six versus two, negative two thousand five hundred fifty eight for the same single family home. So now you can see the effect of uh, interest rate on the rental property if you are the rental property owner. Okay, so who wants extra $700 a month in the pocket? I do.
Okay, so now let's pick another one. Let's just, this is a single family home, right? Let's pick something else. Let's pick, pick some condo. How, how about that? Let's see how condo does um, compared to, let's just pick something in the similar price range. How about it? Oh, that's a new construction. Okay, that's not good. Not to be comparable. Um, let's pick that one. What is this? 242 Sullivan. <coughs> uh, this is actually not a very good comparable because that's more, not really a condo. Let's say the same uh, condo here in the same city. Uh, so two bed, two and a half bath for less money, 483,000. And ooh. let's just take this one out because the assumption is the same. Okay, just for the same 20% down, that's your loan amount. And how much can we rent this one for? Good question, right? So, this is a, a condo, let's see. Or is it like a townhouse style condo? Looks like only got one floor, so it is a true condo. So let's punch in the address here. San Leandro, two bed, two bath. Um, I think this rent is still a little high, given the area. Let's see, oh, 26, okay, actually 26, 22, not bad. For 26, 22, and your mortgage payment is $2,200, and property tax, and don't forget, if you own a condo, you need to pay HOA, so what's the HOA? Uh, HOA dues, $260 a month. Okay, so 260. So you're looking at negative cash flow of $545. Of course, if you are, we are being practical here, we should take into account of uh, vacancy. And oops. And some sort of repair. Okay. Um, and of course, depend on the situation, depend on whether your HOA includes um, uh, water or whether you're making a tenant pay for it, whether you're uh, for a single family home, chances are you need to uh, pay for the tenant's garbage uh, versus in the HOA's case, it's usually included in the HOA dues. So uh, let's say we have a 5% vacancy factor of, uh, of that. Um, and a hundred dollar a month of, uh, of repair. Uh, so realistically, we will be looking at uh, a negative cash flow of uh, close to eight hundred dollars for a condo, and close to twenty, yeah, twenty eight, twenty nine hundred dollar for a single family home. So that is a huge difference. Um, and let's do an just do another comparison, just as to look at the. the effect of the interest rate for the same home. So if we go, this is condo, if we go back to 17.1%, the cash flow is negative 1,166. Okay, so these two are single family home. I'm gonna change the color. And these two are condos. Actually, sorry, I, I, I meant the opposite. These two are as a comparison of the same interest rate. Single family home versus condo, single family home versus condo. And this is at a high interest rate, more like today's rate, single family home versus condo. 
which one is a better deal? Um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty obvious. The condo market is still depressed, um, mostly because people who are um, buying condos, they tend to be first time home buyers and the down payment is not as high and their price tag, they don't shoot as high. So you can, you can also see that difference here. This is almost twice as, as expensive as, as a condo. Um, and, and, and these guys, the buyers of condo, they are more heavily affected by the interest rate because they don't have as, as a big of a saving to put down as, as down payment. So the high interest rate environment has more negative effects on condos than on, on single family homes. Uh, just because the, uh, the buyer pools are, are very different uh, in terms of their uh, financial status, financial, um, financial picture of, of the, those different groups of, of buyers. So yeah, I hope you find this um, really quick exercise helpful. It, uh, that, that's how you can do some quick math on, on when buying rental property. We probably spend what, like 10, 10 minutes just by typing on a, on a, on a spreadsheet with, with the right tool and right information, you can, you can gather a lot of things out of it. Oh, by the way, so I forgot one thing. Insurance for condo is a lot less than than single family home so this is more the, co the cost for condo insurance more like four five four hundred fifty dollars a month instead of uh, fifteen hundred for a year uh four hundred fifty oh for the whole year sorry 450 for the whole year versus 1500 for the whole year okay so this is a, a this actually works out in favor more for for the condo but of course you got to keep in mind uh, condos appreciate don't as don't appreciate as much as single family homes, and and also uh, in this particular case the actual rate deal is definitely on the low side. So it, I I will, I will look at the disclosure of the HOA docs very carefully. Um, I have a feeling that the HOA is underfunded. The owners of this HOA may have to come up with a, a big sum of money down the road to pay for like a roof replacement or siding or exterior improvement project such as painting. So this is um, unrealistically low. Uh, at the Cal Agents, we also manage HOAs um, communities. So if you are not happy with your current HOA, you're not happy with the current management company, let us know, put us in contact with your board members. We're happy to give them a proposal. I guarantee that your board will thank you for us suggesting to switch to the Cal Asian to manage your HOA. Okay, um, so this is our episode today. I hope you enjoy it and see you next time.